Hello, everyone. Uh, we just want to welcome you to this uh, social media session uh, here at Mayo Clinic Florida discussing spine surgery as well as robotic minimally invasive spine surgery and specifically awake spine surgery. Uh, I'm Dr. Selby Chen. I'm one of the neurosurgeons within the spine department here at Mayo Clinic Florida. I uh, did my undergraduate at Harvard, my medical school at NYU, and my surgical training up at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I've been on staff here for about uh, five years, um, and my niche is within minimally invasive spine surgery, and specifically uh, robotically assisted minimally invasive spine surgery. Uh, that is my subspecialty. Um, my partner here today is Dr. Uh, Kingsley Abodi Ayama, and I'll give him a few minutes here to introduce himself. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Kingsley Obadeyama. I uh, did my training at University of Iowa, where I went to medical school. Uh, I did my uh, residency there as well, and then went to uh, Northwestern uh, to do my fellowship. Um, I specialize in deformity surgeries, and I also do minimally invasive spine surgeries as well. Uh, specifically, I do uh, awake spine surgery, and in combination, Dr. Uh, Chen and I uh, uh, combine our skill sets to do uh, both the awake and the robotics together. And great. And I should note that uh, we are each in the safety of our own offices, uh, socially distanced, which is why we're not wearing masks. Um, so we want to relay any concerns on your part. Um, so we want to begin by talking a little bit about spine surgery, you know, why someone might undergo spine surgery, what exactly it entails. Um, there are multiple reasons why someone would undergo spine surgery. Uh, there can be nerve impingement, whether it be related to a disc herniation or spinal stenosis. Uh, they can have some instability in their spine, whether it's traumatic in nature or just related to uh, degenerative changes within their spine. And so spine surgery really centers around decompressing the nerves within the spine, as well as potentially stabilizing uh, those uh, uh, elements within the spine. Um, so when we evaluate patients, uh, whether or not they're candidates for surgery, first of all, we wanna make sure that they in fact have surgical pathology. A lot of times patients will have back pain or leg pain and really no evidence of any structural issues that would be amenable to spine surgery, in which case we often recommend uh, non-surgical therapies such as physical therapy or injections, acupuncture, massage therapy, et cetera. Um, however, if we do identify something structural, we may still divert patients through some non-operative treatments first to see if they get some benefit and we can avoid surgery or we could discuss the pros and cons of moving towards surgical intervention. And that's what Dr. Abodi Ayama and I specialize in is trying to determine which patients are good candidates for spine surgery, as well as which patients would be good candidates for minimally invasive spine surgery and uh, potentially also awake spine surgery done under spinal anesthesia. Um, so Dr. Abodi Ayama, I'll just ask you, uh, First of all, just a little bit of background. How did you get into spine surgery? Uh, so I, I think uh, for me, uh, one of the things that interested me in uh, spine specifically was, uh, you know, really the the fact that there are multiple ways to address the same issue. Um, in addition to that, I, I loved engineering, and there's a lot of engineering when it comes to spine. And uh, you know, I think one thing just fed the other, and um, that, that's really what got me interested in the spine. Right. What about you? Yeah, you know, for me, it was very similar. Um, actually, you know, when I started neurosurgery residency, I uh, thought about taking out brain tumors for a living. Um, <laughs> but then as I progressed in my training, I became more adept at spine surgery. I saw just how much patients benefited from the uh, surgery that we provided and the restoration of function of their quality of life. It really drew me to that particular subspecialty. And, um, you know, there are so many more patients with neck and back issues than there are with brain tumors, thankfully, because brain tumors are obviously a, a terrible thing. Um, but we can impact a lot more people in a very meaningful way with spine surgery. Uh, and that's really what drew me to that subspecialty. Um, as well, you know, uh, when I came here on staff, I really wanted to see how we could advance the field of spine surgery. And really, I thought minimally invasive spine surgery was uh, the way to go. Uh, I saw the benefits of decreased postoperative pain, shorter hospitalizations, and really just a, um, a more 
elegant way of approaching the same pathology that you might see on an MRI scan. And so that's what really drew me to that as uh, something that I really wanted to focus on in my career and seeing which patients may benefit from minimally invasive spinal approaches. Um, and with that, it uh, um, uh, um, you know, led to something that uh, came to Mayo when you actually uh, came here, which is out of awake spine surgery. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and, and how you got into it? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I was trained in the traditional way, just like in everyone else that you do spine surgery under general anesthetic. And, um, you know, one of the things that I noticed on very noticed very early in my career was that patients were doing great from the pathology that they had before their radicular pain was better, their back pain was better. Uh, but they had this delayed return to their normal function. It wasn't that they were having pain, but it was just that they were so fatigued after uh, undergoing general anesthetic. Um, so we started looking around and talking with, with different partners and seeing how we can really get patients back to their normal state, back to where they were pre-operative uh, before surgery to try to um, uh, expedite their, their, their recovery. And so one of the things that we really thought could potentially do that was the awake spine surgery under spinal anesthetic. Okay, and um, can you tell us a little bit about what that process entails and um, how you've seen it improve patients' uh, post-operative recovery? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I think one of the things that um, when, when you've not undergone uh, awake spinal anesthetic uh, surgery before, I think one of the things that sometimes people get confused about is, am I going to be absolutely awake? Am I going to be awake and, and while you're doing all of this work? You know, while our goal is to, you know, keep patients awake and in the sense that we're wanting to keep them comfortable and not having them be on general anesthetic, uh, patients are not completely awake. And I think one of the closest thing to compare this to is patients undergoing a colonoscopy. So it's really a conscious sedation. So while you're not under general anesthetic, you don't have a breathing tube down your throat and, and, and have, you know, your blood pressure and heart rate and uh, respiratory rate being controlled by machines, you are still in a comfortable state where you're able to respond to me appropriately and really do the things that you need to do uh, so that we can we can get this surgery done safely uh, for the patients. Um, one great benefit of that is that, you know, before we start the procedure, a patient gets a, a spinal anesthetic. It's very similar to a epidural that uh, a pregnant woman would get before she goes into labor. Um, and it, it causes uh, the patient to be numb so that they really can't feel any pain. They'll feel pressure and me touching them, but really there's no pain during the surgery. And so after the procedure is over, this anesthetic wears off so that the patient re has return of their function. They can start ambulating a lot faster than if they were to undergo a general anesthetic and they recover a lot faster. Yeah, and I'll say just from the cases that I've done with you and that I've witnessed, uh, these um, uh, so patients do very well postoperatively. They uh, are much less groggy uh, after surgery. They bounce back much faster. Uh, and a lot of the uh, issues that are associated with the uh, general anesthetic, such as the postoperative nausea and vomiting, I think a lot of patients have a lot less of that because of the avoidance of those general anesthetics and the use of the spinal anesthesia. Um, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I've gotten comments back from some of the patients that have undergone this procedure that have been able to return to work two days after a procedure like this, whereas, you know, other patients I think would really not have had the stamina if they were to undergo a general anesthetic. Yeah. And now someone watching this may think, well, then do I have to have spinal anesthesia for my surgery? What if I just want general anesthesia? Is that still an option that you offer to patients? Yeah, absolutely. And so what I tell patients is that ultimately, I'm going to still do the same amount, the, the exact same work that I'm going to do, uh, whether it's 
spinal or whether it's with general anesthesia. Uh, the goal ultimately is to get patients feeling better a lot faster and expedite their recovery so they can return back to their normal life as fast as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, tell us a little bit about you know the selection process in terms of how you decide when someone might be a candidate for uh, awake uh, spine surgery under spinal anesthesia. Uh, what are some of the factors you look into, or, or is it just an open discussion with the patient if that's something that they're up for or interested in? It really is fluid, and and we we discuss this with patients, and you know we, we, this is something that you know we really want a patient's input because ultimately the goal is to have this be a good experience for the patients. We don't want patients that to be uncomfortable, and so when I'm having this discussion with patients, um, one of the things that I ask them is whether or not they have a history of claustrophobia or if, if they're anxious, and so patients that you know may feel anxious or be claustrophobic are not going to be very very comfortable for this. So if, if a patient has that, I usually recommend that we proceed with a general anesthetic because they, it, may, it may just create some anxiety for them. Uh, additionally, patients that have severe obstructive sleep apnea are not ideal candidates for this. So I usually discuss these things with them. And if they do have those, I, I suggest that we stick with the general anesthetic and avoid the spinal anesthesia. Yeah, and I think one of the great things about here at Mayo is that we have a fantastic neuroanesthesia team. And so we run these patients by them and you know they'll give us feedback if they think this patient may not be an ideal candidate for an awake spine surgery if they think that general anesthesia may be more appropriate. So there's definitely some discussion with the uh, you know experts in neuroanesthesia as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, I'll just comment here. I, I think um, the cases where we've teamed up and using robotics and awake spine surgery, I think that's really helped facilitate that procedure as well. Just because with the uh, ease and accuracy of robotic placement of screws within the spine, we know that we're able to accomplish the same goals uh, with higher precision, and that helps ease some of the tension uh, in the OR as well as the patient is still awake um, and not under uh, um, a general anesthesia. So uh, tell us a little bit about which patients you think would benefit the most from awake spine surgery under spinal anesthesia rather than general anesthesia. Yeah, so, you know, we really try to limit this to cases that we're going to be doing a minimally invasive approach. And, you know, uh, some of the surgeries that we do tend to be longer than others. Uh, but any case that is going to be a one or two level uh, transferaminal antibody fusion, or a decompression alone, these are patients that are great candidates for this. And so if, because ultimately, like I said, we wanna keep the patients comfortable. We, we wanna ensure that it's a good experience for them. And so we don't want an individual to be laying on their stomach for an extended period of time. And so these patients that are undergoing a, a surgery within a certain time frame, really all of them can be good candidates for this. Yeah. And, and I think that that is key is, of course, incorporating the patient's desires, uh, screening them for certain medical conditions that may be a hindrance to spinal anesthesia, and then determining how much they would benefit from avoiding general anesthetic. Maybe it was Correct. an issue with general anesthesia in the past, or if there are concerns about, um, you know, any long-term uh, neurocognitive effects that may be somewhat subtle. Uh, I think talking with them and having that conversation with them about awake spinal surgery, I think is uh, is definitely key to having successful outcome from uh, these uh, spine surgeries done under spinal anesthesia. No, I think um, you brought up I think you brought up a very good point. You know, I think a lot, some patients come to me and they're, they're concerned about some of their long-term effects of uh, general anesthetic, even though those risks are certainly low and increases with age. Um, it, it's a discussion that we have with patients. And if they, if we think that they are good candidates for that, those are patients that are very excited and motivated to undergo an awake spine surgery because yeah. it really eliminates any potential risk for, for those long-term effects of the general anesthetic. Right, right. 
Well, no, I mean, I, I think that's, that's great. And I'm, I'm really glad that you're spearheading that program here at Mayo Clinic Florida. It sounds like we've had excellent outcomes from these patients. We've really decreased the length of their hospital stay. Uh, and it sounds like patients have been very satisfied with the procedure as a whole. Well, absolutely. You know, I'm still amazed at how well patients are doing postoperatively. You know, I go see patients in the recovery room and, you know, you could barely tell that an individual has just undergone a, a surgery. And I think uh, patients are really having uh, good, good outcomes and really enjoying uh, what they are able to do immediately after the surgery. Uh, patients are able to pick out the type of music that they want to listen to during the procedure. And, and I think that has been a really good aspect of it as well and allows them to remain calm and, and comfortable. And so uh, people have been very pleased with it. Yeah, no, that, and that's the feedback that I've gotten as well is that it, they've had a really excellent experience uh, with the spinal anesthetic versus the general anesthesia. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of summarize what we discussed today, we talked a bit about our own personal interest within the field of spine surgery, minimally invasive spine surgery, robotically assisted spine surgery, and spine surgery done awake under spinal anesthesia. Um, obviously, it is a conversation that you need to have with your surgeon about whether or not it's something that you're interested in, that you may benefit from, and that you would be a candidate for. But in our experience, given the expertise of our anesthesia faculty and the ability to discuss with experts whether or not this is uh, something that is beneficial to our patients, I think that's really helped us propel this forward here at Mayo Clinic Florida. So I just want to thank all of you for tuning in and uh, watching us, listening to us speak about awake spinal surgery here at Mayo Clinic Florida. I want to thank Dr. Kingsley Bodhiyama for his participation in this as well. If you have any questions about spine surgery or uh, awake spine surgery, please feel free to reach out to the Mayo Clinic. We have resources available to inform patients about everything that we do here. Um, again, thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.